the aggregation of marginal gains. Yep, the methodology made famous by Sir Dave Brailsford in his pursuit to turn British Cycling and then later Team Sky into winning organisations. The thinking being that if you can improve everything you do by just 1%, then these small improvements added up over a long period of time become significant. In this video, we're gonna talk about the most marginal, marginal gains that you can make to your bikes or equipment. Things that may only save you one or two watts, things that in some cases might be a little bit ridiculous, but they can still be effective. And whether or not you choose to embrace them, well, that's up to you. Now, before we do, be sure to subscribe and also click the bell icon if you want to get notifications and support the channel as it really helps. First up is inner tubes. Now, inner tubes have big implications for the rolling resistance of your marginal implications for the rolling resistance of your wheels and tires. And our friends at AeroCoach recently performed a comprehensive study looking at the effects of different kinds of inner tubes. Now, if you switch from a standard butyl black rubber inner tube like this to a lighter well, super light butyl inner tube, then, well, you can expect to save four watts at 45 kilometers an hour. Yes, a whopping four watts, and they're 50 grams lighter too. A word of caution though, the instructions that come with these super light inner tubes does say that they're not ideal for riding down mountains and braking heavily at the same time, but, Still again, you can get even more of a rolling resistance gain too if you switch to latex tubes, according to Aero Coach. With those, you're looking at seven to eight watts over a standard butyl tube. I mean, that's, that's not a marginal gain, that's just a, that's just a gain. Anyhow, you're probably wondering what seven or eight watts actually means in the real world. Well, again, according to Aero Coach, that's 12 seconds saved over 16 kilometers or 10 miles. I mean, that's either gonna sound like loads or not much, depending on your point of view. Wrapping your number in a fancy way. Now, if you do a big event or a sportive, Grand Fondo, something like that, you're often presented with a race number that you have to stick to the front of your bike. Now, doing this in the normal way can result in a big drag penalty. We tested it at the wind tunnel earlier in the year and found it was as much as eight watts at 30 kilometers an hour, which well, is loads. However, we found that by wrapping the number around your head tube in a crafty way like this, resulted in little or no aero drag penalty. Skewers. Now what self-respecting aero nerd isn't going to do this. Orientate your skewers in a way that optimizes them aerodynamically. Traditionalists will tell you to point the lever of the front skewer in line with the front fork and to point the rear one in line with the chainstay. Well, you're probably chucking away almost one watt by doing that. But if you want to take skewers to the next level, then you need Aero skewers. Yep, aero skewers. John Archibald actually had these on his Ribble TT bike at the World Championships in Harrogate. You can see it on his front wheel. And instead of the normal quick release skewer with a lever, it's been replaced by one that isn't quick release, that doesn't have a lever. How do you open and close it? Well, you use a Allen key or a hex wrench if you're American. And by removing the lever, you've actually managed to remove a little bit of frontal area off the front of the bike. How much does this save? Well, typically a sort of a solitary watt at 40 kilometers an hour. It's, it's, it's not much, but I mean, well, I, I'll, I'd take it. 
Modern aerodynamic fabrics and textiles exhibit lower drag than skin, and this has resulted in all manner of aerodynamic clothing items being developed, including socks. Now, during this season, and in particular at the World Championships in Harrogate, it was hard to spot a pro rider not wearing aero socks. And this has resulted in the UCI enforcing a strict sock height rule. The UCI even has an extremely high-tech sock measuring device, which they salvaged off the windscreen of a 1987 Austin Montego. I mean, people love to joke about this device, but without it, then the pro peloton would probably start to look like extras from the video for Britney Spears' Hit Me Baby One More Time. Bar tape, I mean, who actually needs bar tape anyway? Removing it will save weight. I mean, you're looking at about 150 grams and it will reduce your frontal area too, marginally. I mean, yes, your handlebars will be less comfortable and yes, they'll be a bit more slippery when wet, but I mean, just think of the savings. If you have an aero bike, well, with an aero bar, then it'll save even more. I mean, there's a compromise. You could just wrap just past the shifter and leave the top spare, and doing so will probably save you one to two watts. I've done both these things. Exposed nipples. S stop sniggering at the back. Look. A few years ago, I visited the wind tunnel with Swiss Side, and there the head engineer, JP Ballard, spoke a lot about nipples, spoke nipples. He reckoned that the nipples inside a wheel account for about half a watt to one watt of rotational drag when the wheel is spinning. And this is the reason why some brands now hide the nipples inside the wheel rim on their designs. It's a very marginal gain, but in intriguing nonetheless. Buying a brand new bling set of wheels with hidden nipples is likely to be expensive, so a much more cost-effective marginal gain would be to wrap your helmet in cling film. I'm just gonna reach down and grab my helmet. Now, yes, it's covered in vents that help cool you down, but these create drag, the cyclist's number one enemy. Now, wrapping it is likely to reduce that drag. Yes, it's not gonna cool you down effectively, and it's gonna kind of turn your helmet into a mini poly polytunnel greenhouse, but just think of the aero gains, and think of the glory when you win your local time trial. Chopping your drops off. Now this marginal, marginal modification gain can be traced back to the British hill climb scene in the 1950s and 60s and was done to try and save weight on your bike. It also potentially saves a little bit of aero drag as well by reducing some frontal area from the handlebars, although it is covered up by the brake levers. Now, I actually did this myself a few years ago on a rather expensive pair of carbon fiber physique handlebars. It saved all of about 25 grams. Would I do it again? Probably not, especially when you instinctively grab for the drops while descending at 60 kilometers an hour and they're not there. What about your shoes then? Well, if they're like this beautiful pair of physiques, then they've got some boa dials on them. Now, ratchets and dials, they're good, they're functional, but they also create drag. Now, friend of the channel, Rob Hales, he told us about a hack that he did when he was competing, and that was actually to take off the dials. How do you tighten your shoe once you've taken off the dials? Well, you put the shoe on and you tie it and wrap it tight with some tape and then you put your overshoe over the top all in a bid to reduce drag apparently it works I'll, you can try that one yourselves I, i'm going to keep the dials on my shoes
Marginal, marginal gains. You can take them or leave them, it's up to you. But it's important to pay attention to the maximal gains first. It wouldn't be right if I didn't say that. So ask yourself, are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating healthily? And are you doing good quality training? Now, while faster, some of these gains are a bit ridiculous and can open you up to ridicule from your friends. I mean, I should know I've tried eight of them. So just make sure if you do do them that you win and then your friends can't laugh at you. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And please suggest any that we've missed in the comments section down below. And if you'd like to watch a video on aero hacks in the wind tunnel, I did with Opie, click down here.